The first step is to write the auxiliary equation or characteristic equation. 5m squared. 5m squared plus m equals 0. Then we can solve this equation, right? Like, oh, how do we do that? I guess we can pull out the m, right? So pull, pull out the m. So you get 5m plus 1, parentheses, and that's equal to 0. 0. So you have product equal to 0. So you set each piece equal to 0. So m is equal to 0. 5m plus 1 is equal to 0. So you get that. I'm going to put that in a box. I'm going to box everything. And then m, negative 1 fifth. So it's a really good idea to box stuff like as you're going through the work. Um, it makes it easy for you to do it because you know where stuff is. And it makes it easy for me to grade too in case you mess up. Um, so it helps me too. It helps everyone, um, especially in the next section because the next section the problems are like multiple steps. So those are our m's. Now we can write down our solutions. We have distinct real roots. So it's c1 e to the 0x, which is just c1. Yeah, you can just put c1. Negative one fifth x. Wait, we did do a multiple root, so it's the number nine. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Yeah, negative one times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. No, it's good. Plus c two e to the negative one fifth x. I'm gonna put this. Oh, this is y c. So I'm gonna put this in a box. Just just keeps keeps it in a good place. Just keep it organized, right? So I'm gonna do this, like just separate our train of thought. This is a nice problem. You, you most likely have one of these on your test because uh, you have time. Like I'll probably give you two from 4-4 four, four, and then one of these from 4-4 four, four, and then one, just one from the next section, just one. I don't think most, unless you want to. I, I've never put two on a test though. It's too much for humans to, to handle. Yeah, the problems are hard. There's some crazy integrals in the next section. Yeah, it gets, it gets nuts. Oh, yeah, there's some really hard integrals. It's fun. Um, now I'm going to single integral. I know. It's like, it's, yeah. Then we've got to find the form of yp. So, so our initial guess is based off of this. So what would, what would our initial guess be in this case? I thought it was like AX. AX plus B. Plus B. Yeah, it's the full linear. Hey, you made it! It's good. It's the full linear. AX plus B. On Monday, I'm like, oh, he's not here. But then I remembered that you're not in the iCalc 3 class. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, already, yeah, you already took that class with me. <laughs> yeah. So now you're supposed to look here, and you're supposed to look here. So is there repetition? Yes. Yes, there is. Oh, yeah. The C1 and the B. So you have to multiply the whole thing by X. Isn't that sneaky? The whole thing? The whole thing. And I'm going to put this in a box and I'll explain why. The whole thing. So let's just say, let's just say that you're like, you know, I only want to multiply the B by X because, you know, oh, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's then you just combine them. The right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and also, um, then your constant term is gone, although it'll come back when you take the derivative. But the thing is, if you, if you just do this, and you try to do the problem, it won't work. It just won't work. The final answer actually has an x squared in it. So if you do this, you'll never get to the final answer. Another reason to remember is say, okay, so this repeats with this, why can't we just multiply this by, by x? Here's the way I do it. It's because this came from this. And this was one guess. This was one thought process, right? It was like, oh, because we have this, this is our guess. So it was one guess. And so you multiply the whole thing by x. It's like when we had, do you remember when we had like ax plus b sine x plus cx plus d cosine x? And we had like c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. And we're like, oh yeah, b sine x repeats, remember that? And then d cosine x repeats, and we multiplied the whole thing by x. Same reason, it's because this came from one thought process, right? So that's, 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 how, that's how I think about it. So the whole thing, okay? If you mess this up, it's really bad. 
right? It's really bad. That's another reason we have that worksheet, which we'll go over again today. Yeah, because if you, if you get this wrong, it has a chain reaction. Okay, so now we gotta take derivatives of this thing. So let's do it. So yp prime, so there's 2ax plus b, Then we do it again, right? So yp double prime is just uh, two, two, 2a, 2a. I thought this was really tricky. It caught, it caught me off guard this morning in my morning class. I'm like, oh, let's just do a problem. I'm like, I was like, oh, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> hey, what's up? All right. Not that it matters too much. Are we ever gonna have like triple primes with these? Yeah, there's some in the homework. They're not that bad though. I don't think it's as bad as some of the well, like, <laughs> As long as they're not trigonometric, they get smaller, right? We, well, yeah. Well, the ones that aren't trigonometric are almost harder sometimes, right? Or the worst ones are like this. There's one in the homework like this, and then you end up with this. Oh, it's number eight. It's horrible. It's, you'll see if you look at my notes. I, got, I did it completely wrong because I forgot to do this. So I lost an hour of my life. Yay. <laughs> I'll never get that back, but I'll never forget that mistake. So now you plug them into the DE. So plug into DE. Look how far we are into the problem already and we're still on the same board. So much easier than the previous problem, much shorter. This is still 4.4. Yeah, it's still 4.4. Like but it could, it could still be as... It's third. 4.4. Four. Four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could still be as long as that last one we did and have initial condition. Uh, there's not many in the homework like that, but it could but be. It's, okay. it's possible. It's doable. Yeah, it's doable. It's just like, oh. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> you know, this one's going to be shorter because... No, yeah, they're rigged. That's what it is. <laughs> Five times two, eh? Yeah, the homework's pretty nice in that regard, I guess. Five times two. And I signed almost all available homework. Yep. I know it's gone, but what terms were repeated that made it have to add an X? Oh, the B and the C1. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, good. Good, good. So five times two A plus, and then Y prime is two AX plus B. And that's equal to negative eight X. It's so clean. Look at it. This compared to like this. <laughs> it's like, what a difference, right? Like, what a difference. So, Rafael was asking, are there any like this with initial values in the homework? I don't think so. I think they're a little bit cleaner. <laughs> Whoever made the homework was, was not so bad. All right, we, we can do this now. Oh, I'll clean it up. It's 10a plus 2ax plus b equals negative 8x. So, let's make make that, that step. Okay, so now we can just equate coefficients. Look at the x terms. And it's the, I, I picked x because that's here. That's like Nick was asking earlier. And it's the highest power. That's a good question. Like, why did I pick that? I just, I noticed, okay, there's x terms and constant terms. Let me start with the highest one, just to be organized. So it'll be 2a equals, what would be on the right-hand side? Yeah, negative eight, good, negative eight, awesome. So then you divide by two, so A is negative four. I like, I, like, I like this stuff. I like differential equations. They really like, it's a really good review of like all the math, like you're taking derivative, you will be integrating in the next section, so you really like, you learn a lot of math. This technique too is beautiful, I mean this is, and if you go further in math, you, when, you do, when you do applied math, partial differential equations, you turn them all into the DEs in this class and you use, you, you use everything you learn in this class, which makes it even better. It's better when you use what you learn in this class in another class and makes it more fun because then it's like, you know, you really know. So constant, constant terms. Because most people don't, right? They take the class and they forget. So it'd be plus B equals zero. Good. We have a, positive 40. yeah, so it's 10 times, yep, so we positive 40, plus b equals zero, so negative four, zero, plus b equals zero, so big B is equal to 40. I always miss, I used to misspell 40 all the time. Do you know how to spell the word 40? F-O-R-T-Y. Yeah, I used to spell it like this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I used to get all kinds of, yeah. <laughs> I teach statistics and it's one of the problems. Anyways, um, so that's A, B. So now, so now uh, we can 
we can plug it in to our YP, which is here, right into this box. It's so nice that it's in a box, right? You can just find it. So, so YP is negative 4 x squared, because A is negative 4, plus 40x, right, plus 40x. So that's our YP, I'm going to put that in a box. And now we can write down our Y, which is YC plus YP. Mm -hmm. Why is there an X on B? We're going here. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, take your time, yep, for sure, I'll erase what you catch up. Yeah, yep. It's a lot. It's really one of the advantages of the night class is that when you take your test, you have more time. Like my morning class only has 75 minutes. They probably won't have this on their test. They'll probably have like maybe two from this section, or maybe even just one in this. It'll, it'll be shorter. But they only have an hour and 15 minutes. You'll have two hours and 45. It's so much, so much nice. So nice, so much, so much better. A bunch of them, like last time when they took their test, like I called time, there was like six people still there. Like, time's up, guys. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yes. The answer is going to be on the front of C1 and C2. It is now. So I, I, initially it will be. So it'll be this. So C2 e to the negative one fifth x. So so this is the general solution to the DE. So this is all of the answers. So all of the answers can be expressed by this equation. There's no singular solution. This is every single answer to the differential equation. So the last thing we have to do is find the c's. So we're going to use our initial conditions to do that. So our y of 0 and y prime of 0. OK. So any questions so far? Have you see how I got this? It's yc plus yp. OK, good. So now we got to take derivatives. So let's do it. Oh, this is kind of cool. What's the derivative of c1? 0. That goes away. This is going to give us a negative 1 fifth. So I'm going to go ahead and put that out front. So negative 1 fifth c2 e to the negative 1 fifth x minus 8x plus 40? Yeah. Yeah, okay, weird. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did this this morning, but the numbers were different, so I'm like, ah, it doesn't seem familiar. Like, oh, I'm doing it wrong. All right, so now y of 0 equals 0. Let's use this, let's use this first condition. So y of 0. So it'd be c1 plus c2, right? e to the 0 is 1. Oh, oh, what are all these going to become? Zero. 0. Yeah, so we set that equal to 0 from this. Right, plugging in 0, setting it all equal to 0. So you could solve for one of them. I'm going to wait. We'll come back to this equation in a minute. So again, we plug in 0 here. So we got um, C2, this one hangs out, these are all 0, and then we set it equal to 0, which is here. So now we use the second piece, so Y prime of 0, this is kind of interesting. So this is 1, because E to the 0 was 1, so it's negative 1 fifth C2. Uh, this is gone, so you just get plus 40. And that's equal to negative 10, negative 10. So again, plugging in 0, that goes away. We keep the 40. e to the 0 is 1, so we're good. It's funny, there's no c1 here, right? Because it went away when we took the derivative. So now we can actually solve this. Yeah? So for the e to the negative 1, 5, 1, 5, x, you plug in the x? To the 0. To the, to the yeah, yeah, to the top. So it would be e squared, right? No, it would be e, c2, e to the negative 1 fifth times 0. So it would be c2 e to the 0. Oh, because I thought you plugged in that. Plug in 0. No, it's okay. Ask. It's important. It's good. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's better to ask. You had a question? Oh. oh. <laughs> I would never ask questions when I was in class. I sat in the back. Didn't say anything. Huh? I was just nervous. I didn't want to ask questions. Just, you know, I was really shy. So I didn't have any friends. So minus 40. Well, I had one friend, but he doesn't talk to me anymore. Um, so here we have. Yeah, he's gone. He moved away. Huh? 
Yeah. He, he won't talk. He's he's weird. So we're here. So, uh, you negative. Uh, so that was the. That's the initial. Oh, that's the initial condition. Yeah. 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 From here. Some caffeine. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Points back. Yeah. So, any questions? Let me pause. You see it? Everyone okay up to here? All right. So you subtract the 40. Subtract the 40. So you get negative 50. <laughs> By negative five, very good. So we get C2 equals 250. Yeah, wow, it's a big number. Yeah, 250. Makes you think of money or something, like $2.50 or $250. So 250, we have 250. Yep, just plug it in here. The C1 is negative 250. I'm gonna box these things because they're like kind of important. You can box everything. We're done. Now we just got to take these and plug them back into this. So the final answer to this problem. So C1 is negative 250. C2 is 250. E to the negative 1 fifth x. Look at this marker's face. This marker was brand new when we started class. Minus. You can kind of see it actually at the start of this problem. The right. that, it, that it started to fade? I'm gonna look. Because like your soul and the bottom is definitely darker than like Yeah, look, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look, 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 